So the topic is corneal hypopia correction. Um, it's pr pretty similar to the talk of uh, Professor Vogler. Um, however, the indication is a completely different one. First of all, we need to um, reconsider the success rate of myopic correction using a wavefront guided, respectively wavefront optimized LASIK. And we'll see that in the majority of the cases, in more than 90 or more than 94 percent of the cases, we achieve an uh, uh, refractive success of less than half a diopter um, from the target versus achieved correction. Even if we um, see this after wavefront optimized, we are still in the range of up to 90 percent of success rate. How does it look with hyperopia correction? And in hyperopia, this is a completely different story. We'll see that um, this study showed in 413 eyes with the hyperopia correction that we only achieved the success rate in roughly 75% of the cases, which is a dimension um, less precise than the Exima, um correction for myopic corrections. Why is this so? And the reason is the first thing that if we do that donut-shaped ablation in the periphery, we sometimes induce a very strong healing response, which is seen here, where you've done the ablation and you'll see an intrastromal healing response. The other thing is also that uh, in hypoopic corrections, as all of you know, you cannot target always on the cycloplegic refraction, and um, there are many reasons why this precision of the procedure is just not as good as with, um, in, in, as with uh, myopic LASIK. Another problem that you're facing if you're doing a hyperopic LASIK and the regression is this here. You have the preoperative um, keratometry uh, map. You'll see that this is a slightly hyperopic patient. We were targeting, or my father was targeting, for a monovision in this case. And up one year um, post-op, you'll see that nice central steepening. Um, also from the refraction, you do have a nice refraction of minus one um, um, two point, well, minus 1.25 in the spherical equivalent. However, two years after the surgery, you see that shrinking of the optical zone. And in addition, you see that development of that healing astigmatism, which is due to the constant um, remodeling of the epithelium and the constant lid irritation that is, um, that is uh, uh, um, constantly working in order to induce a steepening in this meridian and therefore inducing an astigmatism with the rule. And from the refraction point of view, you also see this that this patient, first of all, lost the myopia, but gained half a diopter of astigmatism, which cannot be the goal in such a hyperopic treatment. Here, that's a 16 year follow up of hyperopic LASIK. You see that in the first years, there is a corneal regression. Afterwards, there is the internal uh, process, um, what also contributes to that regression of up to two diopters after 16 years on average. So we are now talking always about removal of tissue in order to steepen the lens. However, there can also be a tissue inlay in order to um, steepen the cornea. And this is what you see here. That's um, an early OCT from uh, a patient that my father treated in 2004, where he implanted a lenticule. You'll see here the margins of that lenticule at that time, which was not performed by the femtosecond laser. And um, you'll see that this can also induce a central um, steepening. And now I'm coming to the patient that he actually wanted to show. Um, that was a 35-year-old man, contact lens intolerant, hyperopic of plus 5 diopters. And what can we offer to that patient? He had an anterior chamber depth of 2.2 millimeters, so ICL or artisan is not possible in this patient. What can we offer? And there we can ask the um, Z8, how can he help us with that? And we've seen this video, a similar video, also from, uh, from Dr. Vogler. However, this is now with a Z8. I'm removing the epithelium. I'm just jumping a little bit, making marks for the orientation. Then we are cutting a lenticule. Before, it was a plano parallel um, um, cylinder. Now we're cutting a lenticule using the clear pro uh, uh, program. You'll see here the typical um, trajectory of the laser. And then I'll just speed this a little bit up. I'm opening up the edges. And the next step, I'm preparing the posterior side. And again, the same as before, we are also using um, Bauman's layer on top. We did not remove this. We are just performing the posterior cut of the lenticule. 
in the next uh, video I'll show you the implantation of this video uh, of this lenticule. Again, we're doing a 10 millimeter wide um, wide flap in order in order to have the possibility to center the the lenticule um, perfectly onto the visual axis, which we defined with the um, with the Varion system in advance. You'll see I'll un we'll unfold the lenticule, place it. Then in the next step, I'll just double check that I'm from the orientation right. I'll see from the reflex that Bauman's layer is up. This also facilitates afterwards the potential relift since there's a clear membrane. And then I'll just reorientate it, reattach the flap, speed it up a little bit, reorientate the flap. And then afterwards, it's just the treatment just like a regular LASIK. So, what are the um, results from the actual curvature? You see the preoperative map, two days afterwards the postoperative map, you see that substantial steepening um, within, the, within the optical zone. However, you see that there still was a slight decentration of the lenticule, so um, from the visual acuity the patient was not yet satisfied. And um, here the difference map, you'll see that nice steepening with a much wider optical zone compared to the regular standard um, hyperopic LASIK treatment. And afterwards, uh, like one month afterwards, we've done a hyperopic uh, wavefront guided treatment and a topography guided treatment in order to um, extend the optical zone and regularize the cornea. You see this here 26 days later. And the patient, after all, gained an vision, uncorrected visual acuity from 0.3 in the beginning to now um, 0.9 or almost 2020, two months after the surgery already. And um, here you also see that difference map. And that's also a nice application where the Z8, including the clear module, can be very helpful um, for a hyperopic treatment. Thank you very much.